Shalom and welcome to another time of Israel's Hope Bible Church Online. My name is Ron Grossman. We're continuing our studies in the book of Zechariah. This is for April 10th, 2022. We're going to look at Zechariah chapter 10, verses 9 through 12. Let's stop, let's pray, and ask the Holy Spirit to direct us. Father God, we do thank you today for everyone looking in live and elsewhere on Facebook. We ask now that um, you would give us uh, your... Holy Spirit to guide and direct in everything said and done here, and we pray that uh, your word would not come back empty. We ask now for your blessing on this, and pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So follow with me, please. We're going to read verses 9 through 12 of Zechariah chapter 10. And I will sow them among the people, and they shall remember me in far countries, and they shall live with their children and turn again. I will bring them again also out of the land of Egypt, and gather them out of Assyria, and I will bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon, and place shall not be found for them. And they shall pass through the sea with affliction, and shall smite the waves in the sea, and all the deeps of the river shall dry up. And the pride of Assyria shall be brought down, and the scepter of Egypt shall, be de shall depart away. I will strengthen them in the Lord, and they shall walk up and down in his name, saith the Lord. We're continuing God's deliverance of Israel. This is the last quarter of the book. This started in chapter 8, actually, and goes right through to the end of the book. It's almost the half of the book. We're seeing the future portion. To, we're finding a, par, a portion of Zechariah's prophecy today. Uh, as the world is hurtling uh, towards end-time scenario now as we live in it, um, we see that there are many parallels here in what Zechariah is writing. Some of them are a little, uh, you might say, shielded. Uh, you have to understand the other prophetic portions in order to be able to make the connection. So let's take a look at this. Verses 9 and 10 talks about God's people returning to the land. And then verses 11 and 12 speaks that of them that even in affliction, God will strengthen Israel. And out of affliction, so often comes strength. The best example of this is the book of Job. All of the affliction that came upon Job resulted in him, his faith being strengthened in the end. Take a look at the early church. They may have been driven out of Jerusalem. They may have been persecuted for their faith, but they still persevered, and their faith grew as a result of the things that happened and how God intervened for them. So let's take a look at these uh, four verses together. Now, verses 9 and 10 speak about things in the immediate context. Now remember, every prophetic uh, writing has an immediate and yet future fulfillment attached to it. And that's what we're seeing here. This is in verse 9 and 10, the return, the immediate return. You can see some of the things that happened in, uh, in Israel's history. They were sown among the people, and they will be, you remember, they will remember God in those far countries where they were sown, and they shall live with their children and turn again. In other words, they'll turn back to God. If you read in the Psalms, by the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down and they pined to be back in the land and in the temple. He says, I'll bring them out of the land of Egypt. Now, it's not literally Egypt, but Egypt is an example of the Gentile lands, the lands away from the land. And he says, I'll bring them out of there. It's likening Israel's return as being such as was in the Exodus, uh, this grand return of people and they'll come back to the land. He'll gather them out of Assyria. This was to the north and to the, to the east. And bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon. And a place shall not be found for them. There will be such a massive return of the people of Israel in the last days. That there will not be a, a, a place found for them. Now in the immediate sense. Not as many return to the land as were taken away captive. As, uh, some figure that as many as two to three million, if you count the northern kingdom being carried away as well, would have been taken away captive, first to Assyria and then to Babylon. And no, no more than 40, 50,000 at one time came back under Nehemiah, under Ezra, and the others in the return. That was not decreed until Cyrus decreed that in 539 BC. Now, it's interesting that for Cyrus is prophesied by name. In fact, you can read of his name in Isaiah chapter 44, verse 28. He is the one, he's, he's named as Cyrus. This is almost 300 years before the, the actual return to the land. In Isaiah 46, 11 and 41, 2, there are other allusions to a ravenous bird who will come out of the east. And this was Cyrus. And he was the Persian uh, uh, leader who decreed 
that the Jewish people could go back to their land. Then there's the yet future aspect of this fulfillment, place not being found for them. And this was uh, in the more modern context of 1948 and following. Now, if you know the c contemporary history of the Jewish people, you will know that the first Zionist Congress was convened in Basel, Switzerland in 1948. And there Theodore Herzl, who had organized a worldwide meeting of uh, Jewish leadership, literally from around the globe, um, brought them there. And he made a declaration at the end of that first Zionist um, Congress, where he said that within 50 years he believed that there would be a new land for the Jewish people to live in. There were many ideas about where that could be. Perhaps some land could be given to them in South America, Central America, even in America. Um, but that wasn't what was to be. And you see, we know that with the Balfour Declaration in 1917, and then Great Britain's reneging of the Balfour Declaration seven years later and, and the ensuing troubles that came with that. By 1947, Great Britain wanted out of uh, what was then called Palestine, which they had taken control of uh, during World War I. And uh, it was turned over to the United Nations. And in May of 1948, David Ben-Gurion declared independence. It kicked off an immediate war with the surrounding Arab nations. And Israel survived that immediate war. They had to beg, borrow, and uh, almost connive to get enough equipment to defend themselves at that time. It's kind of like what we're seeing in the Ukraine right now, where there are um, being outnumbered and, and outgunned. The U Ukraine army is outmaneuvering the Russian army. It isn't over there yet. But that's a whole other subject for a whole other day. Israel is now back in her land, and she's back in her land, and this is prophesied how they will be in the place, and place will not be found for them. And that's yet future, because there's going to be a return of the people of the house of Israel to their land, yet future, after the tribulation period. Now, watch what verses 11 and 12 tell us here. It says here, They shall pass through the sea with affliction, and shall smite the waves in the sea, and all, all the deeps of the river, and some say this is the Nile that's being referred to here, shall dry up, and the pride of Assyria shall be brought down, and the scepter of Egypt shall be depart away. Now, the scepter of Egypt, maybe it's looking future to a time where there's going to be a, an uprising coming out of Africa, the Horn of Africa, Egypt, etc. Remember, Egypt was one of the enemies of the modern-day state of Israel up until a peace treaty was signed um, in 1980, uh, 1979 at least. And the important thing, though, is that all of these nations, whether it's Egypt, Assyria, whatever, all of these nations who have come up against Israel to try to destroy her, God will put them down, and Israel will rise up. Israel will rise up, and they will be strengthened, look at verse 12, in the Lord. You see, the modern-day Zionist movement wanted to be in the land in a negotiated peace, but they've never been given that sense of peace. Now there's coming affliction again, and it's going to come, and we see it mounting and mounting now. The affliction is coming in the, in the, the sense of the continuing action, actions of various uh, uh, pro-Muslim uh, 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 groups such as uh, Hamas, Hezbollah, who uh, have no place for Israel um, in, in uh, their doctrine, their teaching, and look at Israel as an interloper in the land, and, and uh, now they call them a colonizer, all the modern rhetoric that's being brought out to it. But here's the thing. This is to be sadly expected, and it, this crescendo of, of hatred towards the Jewish people is building and building again, and it's going to continue to build until two things happen. First, the church will be taken out of here. We will be removed. And once we are removed, then the countdown towards the end begins. Sometime after the church is removed, there is going to be things that will happen against Israel, and I believe that's the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war that happens after the rapture. That's simply my take on it. It's not necessarily going to be in that order, but that's my take on it. And it will come because the world will be in, in chaos and some people up in the north are going to say now is the time when nobody is looking. 
it's kind of like how Putin uh, worked his, uh, his timeline and scenario that he wouldn't attack Ukraine until after the Olympics. And that was done, I believe, in cohorts with, uh, with the Communist Party uh, government in China. I spoke on this here a few weeks ago. Ezekiel 38-39 is not Putin's war. We're not seeing prophecy being fulfilled in front of us right now. Don't go there because it's not there. We are still here and those things will not start to happen until after the church has been removed, raptured. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13-18. But until that time, Israel will, consider, will continue to be in a place where there will be a continued rhetoric against her to the place that someone will one day need to step forward and say, I've got a solution for all of the problems that the world is having, in particular for you, Israel. Let me negotiate a peace treaty. And that's the seven years peace treaty of Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 to 27, which will be ratified between Israel and that one world ruler who we know as the Antichrist. Now, I get a lot of believers saying to me, do you think the Antichrist is alive today and in the world? And I look at them and I say, why are you interested? You should be looking for the Lord Jesus Christ, who's coming back first to take the church out of here and then to come back with us at the end of that time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, a time that Israel has never seen since before. That will be the time when God will return at the last moment, when Israel sees that their Messiah is really who it has been preached to them by the 144,000 in Moses and Elijah, the two witnesses who come to Jerusalem to preach, and the whole world turns to Jesus, at least the ones who want to accept him as personal savior. There will be many who will come to faith in those last days. God is going to give strength to Israel in that terrible time. He'll also give strength to Gentile believers in that terrible time. But the thing that we need to do is exactly what God tells us here that Israel will do. We need to strengthen, be strengthened in the Lord. And we need to walk up and down in his name. Look at verse 12 again. I will strengthen them, Israel, in the Lord, and they shall walk up and down in his name, saith the Lord. That's how we should live. Now, as a witness, as an example before others, be they Jewish or Gentile. So the question then can be asked, do you know Jesus as personal Savior? And if you do, then today is no different than any other day. God's coming back, and he's coming back soon, I believe. This is why we exist as a ministry. Israel's Hope Ministries exists to teach these things. And we would desire that all men be saved, just as God has said that in his word. If you have not come to that place where you know for certain where you're going to spend your eternity, then now is the day to consider that. Would you consider perhaps praying for our ministry? Go to our webpage, www.ihopecanada.org, and there you'll find... Um, some things that can be helpful to you. If you have a question about something you've heard here, send me an email, ron at ihopecanada.org. We are a faith ministry. We trust the Lord through God's people to meet our needs on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. If you feel led of the Lord, perhaps to give a gift to this ministry at this time, would you consider that at this time? Our webpage is a place you can do that, www.ihopecanada.org. You'll find there in the support us icon, bottom right of the page, you'll see there, just click on that live icon, takes you into the support portal, and you can see, follow the instructions, you can give a gift, uh, direct um, uh, e-transfer, bank account to bank account, or you can use PayPal, which is another means online, that's a live icon on our page there, the PayPal icon, click on that, takes you directly to the PayPal account. These are both secure manner, online, very secure uh, for donation. If you feel led of the Lord to perhaps send a check in the mail in the old way by snail mail, you'll find our P.O. Box in um, Blackburn ha Hamlet there, Box 47031. Also, you can find that, as I've already stated, on our webpage, www.ihopecanada.org. These messages are posted simultaneously to all of our Facebook communities. 
Israel's Hope Ministries, Israel's Hope Ministries Discussion Group, and Israel's Hope Bible Church. You can find all of these messages in those places and in particular on Israel's Hope Bible Church. We hope we have been an encouragement to you today. Let's close our time in prayer. Father God, thank you to each person who has looked in here today live or will look in later. We ask you to bless the time we have had now in your word and pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So, until next time, we say Shalom. <laughs>